Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on this wonderful Monday. I know how crazy this time of the year is, so we really appreciate everyone making the time to be here today. My name is Chad Buerta. Um, I'm a digital transformation coordinator at Curo, and I'm a part of an awesome digital transformation team that falls within Curo technology. We are all ex-teachers and are extremely passionate about education and doing what we can to enhance teaching and learning. And we work with different schools and departments within the group to help them use technology effectively in their roles. I'm joined this evening by the rest of the Digital Transformation team. Um, just want to say hi to Angela Shera, our Digital Transformation Manager, Shanford Simons and Marcel Fanikak, our Digital Transformation Facilitators. Thanks guys for joining. And if you're attending this webinar and you are asking any questions and they're getting answered, these are most likely the people answering those questions for you. So before we actually dive into the webinar this evening, I just want to go over a few things. If you do have any questions, like I mentioned, if you have them throughout the session, please do use the Q&A function. You should see it on your screen at the moment on the right hand side. Um, it's a space where you can type your questions and we will do our best to answer them. If time allows, uh, we may be able to address some of those questions at the end um, where I'll just unmute my microphone and we can help answer them. Also, please note that this webinar uh, will be made available as a recording for future use. So to have a quick look at what we are going to be going through shortly, um, firstly, I'm going to introduce you to Microsoft 365 for Education, going to introduce you to the platform and then help you understand why it has become a standardized platform for Kiro schools versus different platforms. I'll then jump into a quick demonstration on how to access the platform online and how to download the Office Suite and other tools to your child's device if you need to assist them. We'll also look at the core tools or apps um, that are mainly used, um, as well as a few other educational applications that are available. Uh, through this platform and then we'll round off the evening by showing you where you as a parent can get technical support if you need it. So first of all, we're going to have a look at an introduction to Microsoft 365. So Microsoft 365 for education is a bouquet of technology tools that are available to all Curo staff and all Curo learners. Formerly known as Office 365, this platform includes tools that you may have heard of already or you may, may be using on a day to day basis, including things like Microsoft Outlook, Word, PowerPoint and Excel. A little later, we'll be looking at some of the other tools your children might be using at their schools um, or they have available to them. Most of the tools available in the suite and definitely the ones that we are going to be looking at are available for download onto mobile devices as well. So you can download it onto laptops as well as um, mobile phones and tablets as well. Um, please do just make sure that if you are, um, are downloading onto older devices that the software is updated enough to use them, but they're available for use. All you need to do is access your app store and download them accordingly. The next thing we're looking at now is why Microsoft 365 for education? And it's a big question that comes up quite a lot and a good question, to be honest. Now, there's quite a few really good educational technology platforms on the market, and all of them offer their own pros and cons when it comes to using them in the classroom. When it came to deciding what would be used at Kiro, it wasn't just a matter of drawing a name out of a hat and going with that one. It was a calculated decision to go the Microsoft route based on different criteria. One of the biggest areas of concern is what happens to our personal information and our students or our learners' personal information when using certain tools. Now, Microsoft are excellent at protecting the information of students and teachers. Not to say that other platforms aren't, but they just didn't meet the, the Kiro standards for protecting personal information. 
cybersecurity has has become a massive issue at the moment and it's becoming more and more vital to secure our information and that of our learners. So that's one of the biggest reasons um, we went the Microsoft 365 route. The team that um, drive and develop these educational platforms at Microsoft, they're based in Richmond in um, Washington in the US. And that entire team or that department is heavily made up of educational experts and teachers and ex-teachers from around the world. Um, they, they are really good at building close relationships with institutes and, and teachers to get their feedback to help improve and develop these technologies. Um, we've actually had sessions and discussions with Microsoft and Kuro teachers directly in groups to help improve and see what they can do to help us in a Kuro environment and to ultimately help our learners. The Microsoft team, they've also created a, a global network of ed educators and uh, uh, like-minded people rather, and they're very enthusiastic about things like professional development and collaboration. There's a huge drive from Microsoft side to give teachers support and guidance through professional development opportunities, including training workshops and even certifications via Microsoft Learn. Excuse me. Another uh, a huge advantage, a large um, advantage to using Microsoft is their focus on building future ready skills for the workplace. So the technologies and the applications and the software that, that Microsoft uh, offer, offer, offer our teachers and our learners have actually been designed to help learners acquire these essential life skills for the future. If you have a child um, age 16 or, or a teenager rather age 16 to 18 at a Cura school, you may hear of a program in the coming weeks called the Imagine Cup, where students take part in a global competition where they are guided to create a solution to real world problems using technology. More and more of these um, in, in initiatives are de developing and it's really exciting that we can, can be a part of them. Some of these initiatives have huge potential and could result in students receiving mentorships and further learning within Microsoft. So they really are passionate. And they really try, try hard to drive initiatives to help educators and students in these schools. So when it came to deciding on a, on, on, on a platform to use, Kuro also investigated which tools could meet most of our needs or most of our collective needs rather as a group and Microsoft seemed to tick the most boxes boxes as well. So because because of this Microsoft integrates uh, in integrates really easily with the Kuro networks and systems students will be able to to access multiple tools and software but they'll only use their one Kuro email address and password because everything integrates seamlessly. Um, if some something's not available um, with within the Microsoft suite or features not available, feedbacks uh, communicated directly to that team, and then we discuss ways of bridging that gap to help meet the needs that they don't offer. Um, and then something else that's really nice is that some of the platforms require very little data or sometimes no data, but we'll look at one or two of those in a moment. So we're going to have a quick look at, at how you can now find your children's online Microsoft 365 platform. So I'm quickly going to jump back and make sure I'm sharing my correct screen. Please give me a moment to move over. There you go. And you should be seeing Microsoft Edge in a moment. OK, so. In order for you to help your children or you know if your children forget and you might want to help remind them, they can access this entire Microsoft 365 for Education platform online. They can do it from any, any device anywhere in the world as long as they're connected to the internet. And in order to access that, you can either type in a search 
browser, um, a web browser or search engine, whether it's Bing or Google, whether you use Edge or Chrome, you can type in Microsoft 365 or go to office.com. Now, uh, I, of course, was having technical issues a bit earlier doing this, but it seems to be fine. Now, because this is not my first time signing in, it took me straight in. When it's your child's first time accessing this, it will ask them for their email address and password. Okay. Then once you're given access or once they click OK and sign in, they are brought into this page here that you can see in front of you. Now, granted, I'm just going to zoom in a bit to make it a bit better to view. Now, granted, this is not the prettiest thing in the world. It's not the, the most user friendly online space. But the actual tools and applications which the learners predominantly use on their devices are, are, are very user friendly. But when I explain how this space works, you'll understand that it's actually quite simple to use. So we're actually going to look at three spaces here. The first one is on the left hand side. Okay, This is a list of some of the educational tools that your children have access to when they sign into office.com. The top three are your normal office tools, your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and these are all online versions. As you can see, I've opened it up, online versions of those tools. Okay, We aren't going to go through every single tool, but as you can see, I've opened up Word online and I can do my work. If I uh, use my Word or Excel PowerPoint on my device, on my laptop, and it's signed in with my Curo email address, all my work gets saved here automatically as well. But we're going to speak a bit more about that just now when we speak about cloud storage. So you can access any of these online tools on the left hand side. And if your children or you would like to go and investigate what other tools are available, you can also click on this icon called all apps on the bottom left and will open up a list of different learning tools available to your children through Microsoft. 365 for education. The other space when I go back to my, my Office 365 homepage that I'd like to explain is this centralized dashboard area. Basically, this is a list of any work that your child has been working on recently. So if they've been doing um, a book report using Microsoft Word, they were working on it on their laptop, it will display in this list here in front of you and they can click on that link and continue working on it online. If they perhaps left their device at school or it stopped working, they could sign into office.com on a different device and access that same work that they were doing. And then the last section I want to bring your attention to, which is really important, is the install office button over here. You can download and install the Office 365 applications on multiple devices. Remember, though, when using these tools on a device or on a laptop, whether it's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, whatever it is, it is signed in to your children's username. So I would recommend that you that it's, it's used for your for your children's um, schoolwork, because if you do start doing other things, they'll be saving onto your your children's school profile as well. Just a heads up there. But that is how you can access and how you can navigate the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 space online. Quickly going to jump back into the presentation. There you go. Okay. Now, what we're going to be looking at is probably the biggest application in the Microsoft 365 suite or the one that's kind of integral to, 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 to what we do with Microsoft 365, and that is Microsoft Teams. You most likely have heard of Microsoft Teams, especially over the last uh, couple of years. It, it, it became quite popular when the world went into lockdown and people need to Need, needed to communicate online. And Microsoft Teams is basically the central space for communication and collaboration in all of the Curo group. It's a tool where students can be placed into groups, which are called Teams, 
with their teachers and fellow students per class that they take or per subject. And it can also be used to host online lessons for remote learning and hybrid learning. Teachers are able to share uh, and store classwork in these teams, and that information can then be accessed at any time, for time from students uh, going in, in, into the team's application. All team members can engage in conversations with their classmates and their teachers within these teams, and these conversations can be viewed and answered in a general space for everyone to comment on. Really nice to facilitate conversations on topics. There is also a chat function in the Teams app, so students can chat directly with their teachers or their classmates. However, schools are encouraging that these chat spaces are used for school communication only and appropriate usage of, of, of it by teaching digital citizenship or netiquette. Through Teams, students uh, can also have tasks assigned to them by their teachers and they can complete these tasks and, and they get marked in the app by the teachers as well. Um, and then the teachers can also monitor students' engagement in their team. So they can actually go and see when a learner's access certain teams in the app, if, they've, if, if they're accessing their classes, if they've accessed any classwork that's been uploaded, even if they've opened that classwork, and if they've been joining any of the online lessons. Remember, it can also be accessed from anywhere in the world as long as there is that internet connection. If you don't have a device with the Teams app installed, remember you can always go to Microsoft 365 online or office.com, sign in with the Curo email address and password, and you have access to your Teams app in the platform and access to everything that you need to. Another really great feature or um, or yeah, great feature of Microsoft Teams is how it connects and integrates with other Microsoft educational technologies as well as as well as other third party educational technologies too. The next tool um, I'd want to speak about, and it's also really, really important, um, very close to being the biggest app for me as well, close to Teams is Microsoft OneDrive. Microsoft OneDrive is a cloud storage tool. Now, if you have no idea what cloud storage is, that's okay. It's, it's when you save any files or folders or content to a profile that is online, and you can then access that information from anywhere. So if you have used social media apps or websites like Facebook or Instagram or even TikTok, these all use cloud storage to store your pictures and your videos and your documents. And this is how we can access that content when you sign in to your profile from any device anywhere in the world, basically. If you've heard of tools like iCloud, um, Google Drive or Dropbox, these are all platforms that have been designed for cloud storage. So those, those social media tools I mentioned use cloud storage, but Google Drive and your, your iCloud and your Dropbox are are designed for cloud storage. So OneDrive is Microsoft's equivalent of those tools, your iCloud, your Google Drive and Dropbox. Each Curo learner and staff member, so each person basically with a Curo email address, has been given up to one terabyte of storage space online. If you, if you don't know how big a terabyte is, uh, to give you an idea, the average picture you would take on a phone the size of that picture in your phone is between three and nine megabytes. A terabyte is equal to a million of those megabytes. So you can store tons and tons of stuff. Your, your children have loads of space to use for their schoolwork. They should never need any more, to be honest. And it's the same as having a hard drive, except you can't lose this hard drive. It's saved on the cloud. You can access it anywhere in the world. And these folders or files even saved in this OneDrive space can also be shared with fellow classmates or teachers for collaboration if need be. Probably the biggest feature for me of this is actually quite a simple one. It's nothing fancy, but I use it every single day. And that is that Microsoft OneDrive can sync directly with devices. So what that means by syncing is 
you can add work to your device or go on to office.com and open OneDrive and add your work there. And what syncing means is it's connected to the device folder. So any changes you make in the device folder will make changes to OneDrive online. Any changes you make to OneDrive online will also make those same changes on the device or the laptop. So it's really nice to do that. It just helps students when it comes to saving work. They can save their work straight to their laptop OneDrive folder and it will always save it automatically online to the cloud as long as they connect to the internet. So on the screen now you can see I'm sharing a slide called the Microsoft OneDrive. The left hand screen is the view of my Microsoft OneDrive online. Or, well, when I say mine, it's actually the, the view of a student called Kiro Learner. There you go, Kiro Learner 1. Then on the right hand side is the view of that same folder, except I'm looking at it on my laptop. And you can see they are identical. So if I add anything to the folders here on my laptop or I edit anything, it will change the same folders in the online version. It's a great way to make sure that your children keep everything they need from school safe and secure and accessible at any time from anywhere. The last uh, tool I want to show you from the Microsoft 365 suite this evening is Microsoft OneNote. I will go over a couple of the smaller applications um, quickly, but this is a little bit more of an in-depth view of OneNote. Microsoft OneNote. Um, OneNote in a nutshell is a digital filing cabinet. I remember when um, you know my, my first kind of interactions with OneNote was when I would use a computer or a laptop um, that I hadn't quite used in the past and I went to print something, OneNote would pop up as a printer. And I had no clue what it, what it was, but I'd click print, hoping my printing would go through and nothing would take place. Only later on when I started using OneNote, it all made sense to me. So as I mentioned, it's a digital filing cabinet, basically. Uh, in, in the application or in the OneNote, students can have multiple notebooks saved. And each notebook is like a digital notebook or, or a digital lever arch file. So right now, if you're looking at the screen, this is an example of a notebook, mathematics grade five E1. So that's a notebook for that subject. And you can see that they have done some work and teachers have been able to mark it. The reason I mentioned it being like a lever arch file is as you can see, there's multi-colored tabs. And those always reminded me of the page dividers in a lever arch file being multi-colored. Now with these notebooks, as I mentioned, students can have multiple notebooks. Sometimes teachers even create these notebooks for their classes from within teams so that the students don't actually need to create them for those classes, for those teams. So it's a really nice way for teachers to manage classwork and to analyze students' progress because they have access to their notebooks for those classes at any time. Teachers can actually create a personal space for learners to distribute and organize their lesson content. Work is shared directly to these students' notebooks from the teacher's profile. Once it's received, the students can complete the work directly in the OneNote app or online, and teachers can see the work on their side and mark or comment accordingly. As you can see on the screen, students were sent work from a teacher, this Kiro Learner 1. Kirillona 1 completed the work and the teacher marked it in the app for them. You can also see that uh, teachers can even share things like audio commentaries, they can share notes, they can share embedded videos, drawings, and they can also embed other educational tools. The biggest feature for me with OneNote though is that you can also access this content offline. You don't necessarily need to be connected to the internet to see what has been shared in OneNote. You do, however, need the internet to update any information that's been shared with you, or for any work you or your students have done, or your, your children rather have done in OneNote to sync with the teacher's side. So that's the only time you would need the internet connection. So learners can leave school with work sent to them at school, get home without an internet connection, complete the work 
in OneNote in their digital notebook. And when they get back to school and connect to the Wi-Fi again, all that work is sent to the teacher in one go. Those, I would say, are your three core educational tools that are used at the moment in most schools alongside your Microsoft Word, PowerPoint and Excel. There are also a, like I said, a bouquet of tools. There's tons of different educational tools available that some schools use for different scenarios. All of these other educational tools are Microsoft Forms, which is used to set up and share interactive quizzes for students that come can be completed in live time and then the results are collated for teachers to access and download so they can set up quick mental maths or quick multiple choice or feedback tasks for students to complete um, and as i said educators have access to all that data afterwards flipgrid is a brilliant application it's a brilliant tool used for video discussions. Teachers can set tasks and students can complete them using their device camera to submit a video response or start a conversation. It's great for oral work for language teachers um, that can be set for homework. The interactive tools like Microsoft Whiteboard as well, and they are readily available. These interactive whiteboards can be accessed by multiple people at the same time as well. So it's fantastic for collaboration. And they can be shared in Microsoft Teams and during online or hybrid lessons for everybody to see and collaborate on. And then Microsoft Stream is an internal tool that is used for secure video streaming. It can only be accessed by people with Curo credentials, so Curo email address and password. And tutorials and online lesson recordings are often saved here and made available to students through Microsoft Teams. Those are just a few of the other applications available, but there are plenty more um, available for students to enhance their learning experience. So although they do, we, we often use those core tools. As you can see, Microsoft and in fact, Curo have given everyone access to a variety of strong educational tools and platforms. And to kind of wind down the session this evening, I'm going to quickly show you how you as a parent can get support or further help for any technical issues or IT issues your child or children might be experiencing with their devices, if it's a Cura onboarded device or from school. So for any assistance, all you need to do is contact, contact Cura Service Desk. Okay. You would email a service desk at curo.co.za or call the number. I would suggest emailing them because you, then you get a strong paper trail. And what you would need to do is you include the, the learner, your children's name and surname, their email address, your family code if you know it, the full school name, a contact number, and a detailed description of the issue. You can also include a screen grab if you can or supporting attachment that shows the problem. The reason all this information is asked for is that the more information you provide for your problem, the quicker it will get resolved. OK, and that is your line of support if you have any issues. Otherwise, you can also speak to your students, teachers, if you aren't having any luck and maybe they can push it from their end or your children, teachers rather pushing it from their end. Forgive me, I'm used to doing a lot of training with educators. Um, but that is it from me. So just want to say thank you again. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, I hope you have found this webinar useful. I'm sure questions have been flying in, uh, but if you do have any, please do sh share them in the Q&A section. And as a team, we'll unmute our microphones or answer them in the chat and we'll do our best to address all of those questions.